Hello friends, this video on diversity in living world part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us now talk about the next characteristic that is reproduction. Okay, so reproduction. The process by which living organisms produce new organisms similar to themselves. Giving birth to young ones, which look similar, like a baby elephant will look very similar to an elephant and it will not look like a lion or it will not look like a tiger or a human being, right? Similarly, a, a baby, a human baby will look so similar to a human being. Not only human being, it will look even more similar to the parents. So is true for all the different living organisms. So of their offsprings look very similar to them. So that is the process of reproduction. And this process of reproduction is seen only in living organisms. It is not seen in non-living organisms. We do not see a chair reproducing. We do not see a chair giving birth to a small chair or we do not see a table giving birth to a small table, right? So no non-living organism can reproduce. So only living organisms have the capability to reproduce. Now, when I talk about reproduction, there are many different ways by which living organisms can reproduce. The two common modes of reproduction are sexual mode of reproduction and asexual mode of reproduction. We have discussed about the entire process of reproduction in class 10, how each organism actually reproduces. So here I'll just quickly talk about the different modes which are seen in different organisms. So in, our, in, um, in the previous slide, whatever I showed were mostly sexual reproduction in human beings or in animals, mostly sexual reproduction take place. However, in many organisms, asexual reproduction also happens. So whenever I say sexual reproduction, it involves two sets. It involves two parents a male and a female. But when I talk about asexual reproduction, it doesn't need two parents really. Only one parent can give birth to the new organisms. For example, amoeba. So in amoeba, they reproduce asexually by binary fission. What is binary fission? Here if you see the parent amoeba splits into two parts giving birth to two daughter organisms and that this splitting is known as binary fission because two organisms are formed from one that is why it is called binary. Again in planaria how do they reproduce? They also reproduce asexually. So here you see there is only one parent. We do not need two parents. So here what do they do? The body of the parent gets divided into pieces and then each piece is capable of regenerating or each piece is capable of giving rise to the entire organism. So only one organism gave rights to three daughter organisms. So here also only one parent is involved and three new organisms are formed. So this is how planaria reproduce asexually. Again, if you talk of hydra, so they reproduce by budding. This process is known as budding. What happens in that? So in hydra, this is how they look like, right? They have these tentacles. So a small bud appears here, somewhere here in their body. So there is a small outgrowth and that is known as bud. This bud gradually starts growing and it grows into a new organism. So once it becomes mature, it detaches itself from the parent organism. So that is how budding actually takes place and they reproduce asexually. Again, in many plants like strawberry and grasses, they reproduce asexually by vegetative propagation. So how do they reproduce? So here you can see what kind of uh, roots I mean, they, if you look at their, uh, this part, the stolone. So it is actually getting, getting over, meeting the ground at some other point where again new roots are developed and a new plant grows altogether. So that is how new plants arise from existing plants by vegetative propagation. So this is, this process is vegetative propagation. Again, in some other organisms like rhizopus or fungi, they reproduce asexually by spore formation. So there are small spores contained in these kind of structures in their bodies. So these spores are capable of giving rise to new organisms altogether, right? 
So not only these, there are many other modes like fragmentation, regeneration, by which living organisms can reproduce asexually. So altogether, what we can say is, whether it is an asexual mode or a sexual mode, but living organisms have the cap capability to reproduce. They have that ability to produce organisms similar to themselves. But no non-living organism can reproduce. But that doesn't mean that each and every living organism can reproduce. There are many organisms which are not capable of reproduction. For example, you would, you would have seen that there are many human couples who do not get a child. So there might be some disorders in either, either of the partners because of which they are not capable of giving birth to a new organism. Similarly, there are many other living organisms who because of some or the other disorders can cannot reproduce so it is not met so that doesn't mean that they are not living so reproduction is not a necessity for an organism to be living but all living organisms only the living organisms can reproduce no non-living organism can reproduce so if we see some organism is capable of reproduction that means that organism is living but if we see some organism is not capable of reproduction then it might be living it might be not living thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors Thank you once again.